Good morning and welcome to In The News with Savvy Sophia. Welcome to the 6th of September. We've just reached another month. Um, last week was bank holiday, so I didn't bring you the news then. But um, welcome back to a new week. I'm sure all the kids are going back to school now and parents are feeling relieved after the six weeks long holiday as we are as grandparents as well. So welcome to another episode with myself. Sapphire Gray. In the news today, we've got a lot of news um, to report, and we're going to kick it off with market madness. £7,000 per calendar month unit let in hours and 78 viewings on just one HMO. Can you imagine? If evidence was ever needed for the rental market is booming right now, here is the proof. A property with an oxen rent of 7000 per calendar month was let in just one day. And the same company has seen 78 viewings on a HMO unit listed to let. David Alexandra joined chief executive of Scottish lettings firm DJ Alexandra, says activity in the rental market generally has increased enormously in recent weeks, and his firm has been experiencing record demands above above pre-pandemic levels. The two examples he quoted are in Edinburgh, but he says the whole market is flying. What do you think about that? Do you think the rental market has gone extremely weird and wonderful? Share in the feeds. And if you are um, listening in this morning, please put your name in so I can see you and have a conversation with you as well. I'd love to hear all your feedback and, you know, just have interaction with you. So please feel free to share your comments or any questions you may have this morning. It goes on to say we are seeing unprecedented demand in the private rental sector with the opening up of the economy over the last few months. Activity was already building steadily, but in the last few weeks, it has now increased substantially. Letting a 7,000 per month property is just one day in one day is unusual at best of times, but this is not by any means isolate, an isolated incident at the moment. Properties are flying off the market in a matter of days following listings. We are finding an enormous um, pent up demand from tenants who are actively in, looking for properties and immediately, once they're listed, they're being rented out. Just three months ago, there was so many, um, were many 1,900 properties available in Edinburgh alone. And that figure has dropped over to 600 rentals on the market at the moment. Edinburgh is undoubtedly the center of extremely high levels of demand at present. But we are, they said they are seeing increased activity in the private rental market across Scotland. The wider concern is that demand may now be outstripped by supply. This is likely to lead to a shortage of available properties on the market and rising rental prices in the short term to medium term, which is really, uh, you can see it now. A lot of properties are coming onto the market and just flying off. So what do you think? Share your comments. Love to hear from you. In Avenues government here comes rent control to be introduced in part of the uk rent control possibly ensures ensuring that rents do not exceed 25 percent of household income are poised to be introduced in part of the uk the deal between scottish national party and the green party to ensure a majority of government north of the border includes a series of um comments which both groups are Uh, politicians say they share, which rent controls close to the top of the list. In a document outlining issues with the support of both parties published over the weekend, that was two weeks ago, it says an objective of the new Scottish government will be implementing an effective national system of rent control, enhanced tenants' rights, as well as delivering 110,000 affordable homes by 2032. So what do you think about this? Do you think that rent control should come in or not? 
please feel free to share your comments and say good morning. I'd love to see your comments. And if you're on the replay, don't forget to tap hashtag replay and please still leave your comments or questions. I'm happy to uh, go back in and answer all questions. And I'll be I'll be glad to do that. It says, but this deal is about people as well as the planet. Together, we would deliver a new deal for tenants, giving tenants more rights and introducing rent control to help tackle Scottish housing crisis. Do you think there's a housing crisis about? I think there's a housing crisis about this short, short, uh, shortness of housing now for um, not only private renting, but government renting is really short. Rent control has been a favourite of the Green Party's um, policy for several years across the UK. The party was also influenced in Scotland by pushing the SNP administration to exceed eviction bans on several occasions during the pandemic. No details of the scale or time tell, um, timetable of the rent controls have yet been released by the newly linked ruling parties. So what do you think about this? Do you think that there should be rent control? It shouldn't exceed more than 25%? Let me hear your views. In avenues, buy to let specialist identifies up and coming booming areas. A nationwide buy to let consultancy says it believes one specific area of the country is on the verge of rental market boom. Squ um, Square Property Investment has singled out the Northeast in general and Teens Valley in particular for special treatment. Whilst returns from the Northeast currently lag behind, the North, Square insists it's about to change. House prices in the North East have climbed considerably in the last year, up by 11.8% annually, while other factors have come out in favour of economy growth. Nissan recently revealed that its Sunderland car factory would create 400 jobs in the area, while the redevelopment of Teenside Red Car Still Works is expected to bring a further 18,000 jobs, creating the UK largest free port in the process. This incoming investment is already showing signs of stimulating the local property market, according to figures released by Square, which showed rental demand in the North East is currently higher than both the North West and in, of in, England and England as a whole. Within the Teens, um, Teens Valley area in particular, Darlington is home to the highest level of rental demand, with Redcar and uh, Cleveland also seeing um, tenant demand for rental homes, sit well above the regional average. Harley, Hartlepool and Stockton on Teens are also homes to a good level of rental demand. So while I'm sharing this with you, take hefty notes because these are the areas that are up and coming so if you're looking to buy know where you are buying because if they're building um businesses around creating jobs there's 400 um jobs car factories creating and over 1800 in other areas look to start buying your rental properties around those areas as well They've seen more investors within the buy to let space opt to invest outside London due to more favourable yields, which I agree with, on offer. And as a result, the North West has been performing very well in recent years. However, the focus certainly seems to be shifting to the North East as the next area of substantial growth. And investors are eyeing up the potential returns they may come due to substantial projects like the redevelopment of red car still works. The firm's foundations of a strong rental market are already in place across Teens Valley area. But when you are, when you also factor in the potential shortage of existing stock in the same area, it presents a great opportunity for those considering an investment in the buy to let sector. So if you're looking for the buy to let sector, consider these areas as well. They'll be very good. In avenues, Lloyds Bank, landlords and even bigger than first anticipated. More details have emerged of Lloyds Bank plan to become a landlord 
and the proposal to even more ambitious than first thought. Lloyd's, which is in recent months has set out a broad proposal to become a residential landlord, was thought to be going into the uh, build to rent niche sector. However, the Financial Times now says the bank has set itself a strategic challenge for buying 10,000 existing properties by the end of 2025 and then a total of 50,000 by 2030. The figures have been revealed in an internal job advertisement within the banking group and seen by the Financial Times. In June, it was revealed that the Financial Times that the bank's first acquisition will be a new build block in Peterborough. The first tenants are expected to move in shortly. This um, and all of the units purchased by Lloyd's will be managed by its own uh, subdigitary called the Citra Living, which was set up this year according to filing, um, filings at Companies House. This week's internal advertisement giving details of proposals to start the Citra um, would have a balance sheet worth four billion and generated 300 million pre-tax profits on 100,000 homes. It said Citra may consider mergers and acquisitions or strategic alliances to reach the targets. Light, which owns the UK's um, biggest mortgage lender, the Halifax, is keen to become a major player in the rental sector. What do you think about banks coming into the rental space? Do you think it's it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Share your opinion. I'd love to hear it. In, it is for also that uh, becoming a landlord could allow Lloyds to sell other products to um, to tenants, such as insurance or loans or for deposits. Lloyds owns the Scottish Widows and Bank of Scotland brands and has involved with wealth management and insurance services. It is full year results in February. It said it was committed to broadening access to home ownership and exploring opportunities to increase support in the rental sector. If you want to um, read that full story, you can find that in the Financial Times as well. In Avenues, warning, HMRC watching landlords using Airbnb for events. A tax expert, expert is warning professionals and amateur, amateur landlords that if they switch from conventional rentals to Airbnb style shortlets for a major, uh, for a major event, they risk being scrutinised by HMRC. A, a tax director uh, at the Chartered Accountants and Business Advisor, Russell and Russells, has taken this autumn's CLP26 Climate Change Conference as an example. He says the Glaswegians um, dreaming of making thousands of pounds from renting out their homes to conference delegates and visitors should expect HMRC to be on their case. Now, what do you think about that? Do you think it's right for um, HMRC to be um, getting involved in someone who's doing a co accommodation such as Airbnb? Anyone taking advantages of the conference by letting out domestic accommodation during this period should be aware that the rental income received may be subject to income tax and that the rental activities may need to be um, notified to the HMRC, he says. There has been a lot of publicity recently about the high rates of accommodation rental changes charges that will be paid to landlords during the CLP26 conference, but potential landlords need to be aware the HMRC recently came to an agreement with Airbnb for the company to supply it with full details of all landlords that have used Airbnb's websites to secure guests. So details of any letting income and related expenses may need to be reported to HMRC. In a self-assessment tax return and any profits made um, be subject to income tax. HMRC could obtain details of landlords and check that the list against those who have notified uh, is about to let in their property. He continues, there are certain reliefs and allowances available to landlords that may 
mean that there is no <clears throat> requirements to notify HMRC or the level of profits may be below taxable limits. But the important thing is not to overlook the tax implications of the letting activity and seek professional advice. Don't assume that this is a no tax to pay, that, that you don't need to notify HMRC or that HMRC will not be aware of the rental activity. If you fail to notify HMRC of the income, it could lead to penalties of up to 100% of, of any tax that would have been payable otherwise reported to HMRC. So really the, the upshot of this is if you are going to rent out your, your property for delegates or any exhibitions, just check with your account and check that you're not um, liable for any taxes because if you are, then you're going to have to pay and make sure that you've got enough money that is covering from that rental to cover those taxes as well. Don't get caught short with this. In avenues, would you house an Afghanistan refugee family? A local authority is appealing directly to landlords to join a scheme um, rehousing Afghan refuge families. Reckham Council says the families will be supported with accommodation in the private rented sector when they arrive, with the integration and work support provided by the Red Cross and other organisations. The council says we are now looking for family accommodations in the private housing sector for these families. Due to the urgent nature of the resettlement, we are taking the unusual step of appealing directly to any landlords with properties that they feel may be suitable um, for a resettlement family to please contact the lettings, local lettings at reckham.gov.uk as soon as possible to discuss further. So if you have a property and you wouldn't mind letting to an Afghanistan, please do get in touch with Reckham. They're doing something fabulous by giving um, rehousing to these Afghanistans. And we all know what's been going on in the news. So it'd be really helpful to them. The proposal um, part of the Afghanistan, Afghan uh, relocation scheme received a unanimous support from members and they know that Reckham will be welcome families who have done so much to support our troops in the British governments while they are active on active duty overseas. If you have a suitable property, please don't hesitate to get in touch, they have said. In avenues, exposed. The council has flouted its own policies to find landlords. Now, if you remember a few weeks ago, I was talking about a local authority in London, Redbridge Council. It says a local newspaper investigates has revealed that a London council flouted its own policies to maximise the number of landlords it could find. Wow. A freedom of information request from the Ilford Record has found that Redbridge Council secretly and informally flouted its own policy over finding landlords. Uh, testim a testimony from a senior officer in 2019 court case reveals the council's policy to try to resolve issues with landlords informally before issuing a fine was ignored for a few weeks that year. Meanwhile, the council increased enforcement against landlords and manage managing agents in 2019, issuing 100 fines in the first six months of that year. Redwood Council has yet to confirm how many other fines were issued without following the policy and whether they were cancelled or reviewed in light of the legal uh, proceedings. The newspaper this week reports in a ruling July the 4th, 2019 tribunal, Judge Peter Korn decided the council disobey, disobeying its own policies was enough reason to overturn a 5,000 fine issued to a managing agent in that period. Redbridge Council has yet to confirm how many other fines were issued without following the policy. The new article looks in particular at a £5,000 fine issued to the property agent for an Aylford flat located in the council's selected licensing scheme because it was found to be on licence. 
it's it was found to be on license. It transpires that the judge was concerned that this particular fine was issued without the proper proce uh, process having been followed. When the fact that was, was actually about the agent being simply helping his mother to manage a property. What do you think about this? Do you think more councils need to be looked into and investigated uh, about these unlicensed properties or licensed properties or just flouting the rules as they see will? Please share your comments in the feed. In avenues, portfolio landlords must upbeat about income and assets wealth. Some 30% of landlords who plan to remortgage by mid-2022 intend to release equity from their properties according to the foundation home loans. And the research conducted by a BVA BDRC showed that portfolio landlords, um, those with four or more buy to let, are more likely to want to remortgage in the next 12 months than smaller landlord, um, port landlords. Portfolio landlords are also significantly more upbeat about the prospects of their buy to let income. 46% said they felt either good or very good compared with just 35% of single property landlords. For the larger scale landlords with 20 or more properties, the proportion of regarding business as good and very good shut up by 50%. Portfolio landlords with more than four mortgage properties have average portfolio values over 2 million for the first time since the last year, 2020. Well, this is good news. George G, commercial direction founder, Foundation Home Loans said, we've seen the buy to let market moving steadily towards a greater level of professionalism for some years now. And this has meant a growing number of landlords have now uh, defined as portfolio operators and have long term plans which involve making the most out of their properties. The research shows a number of key portfolio landlords' intention, particularly around extracting equity from their properties. Over the years, in many areas of the country, which seen double-digit house prices growth, even without access to the stamp duty holiday, the intentions to remortgage to take out increased value of the purchase has grown exponentially. It means advisors are more likely to see growing spikes in the buy to let remortgage advice demand. And um, also the position news is that it's very competitive. There's so many different products out there that is competitive to the buy to let um, landlord portfolio owners that they are basically going out and remortgaging so that it, they can buy more properties and build their wealth that way. Portfolio landlords are likely to grow in a number of months and years ahead, as specialist lenders are in this space. They said they will continue to develop their product, products and options and flexible criteria to help them to get the most out of their existing properties to expand their letting footprint. So what do you think about that? Do you think it's really good, a good time for landlords to start remortgaging their property so that they can build up their portfolio. I've always said when you've accumulated enough equity in your property, it is always wise to take out the equity in order that you can buy another property. That's how you build out your portfolio and that's how you build your wealth. In avenues, tenants push into poverty, benefit cuts, says landlords. The National Residential Landlords Association has joined a series of charities and property marks to warn about the poverty risk of expected changes to benefits. The government admits that in England, Scotland and Wales, the number of private rented households in receipt of universal credit with an entitlement to housing support as part of the payment has increased by almost 107 percent from 746,694 in February 2020 to 1.5, over 1.5 million in February 2021. 
And as of February 2021, over 55% of these households, 858,606, have a gap between their housing cost support and the rent that they have to pay. The NALA has linked with shelter, the mortgage works, nationwide crisis, and a big issue in others to issue a lengthy statement that they are concerned over the benefits crisis, crisis and cuts. You can read the full um, report on this as well um, on the government website. In avenues revealed what landlords are thinking, thinking, saying and planning right now. The value of the private rented sector in England, Wales and Scotland grew by 5.8% to a draw dropping 1.4 trillion in the last year, according to a new report from Shawbrook Bank. Since the first national lockdown, house prices have rebounded at pace. March 2021 saw house prices growth of 9.9% year on year as the stamp duty holiday boosted the confidence and demand. Buy to let properties have also seen market prices increase with a value of average buy to let properties across the UK rising by 5.6% to December 2020 to approximately 258,000. The past 18 months has uh, been a period of substantial consequences for the PRS, which has also already been impacted in recent years by taxations and regulation changes. Some landlords choose to leave the market and the PRS actually contracted in size over the last year. Separately, many tenants made a change opting to return to their family homes during a pandemic, to leave cities in search of more space or to make the most of the stamp duty holiday to become homeowners themselves. This reduce, um, reduction in the size of the PRS, therefore, isn't surprising after last year. The outlook, however, points to growth demand from tenants have been growing, growing in total. 42% of landlords report that they have demand increase in their properties in the last 12 months. I mean, everyone's trying to bounce back and everyone has really bounced back pretty well. But there is such a shortage of, of properties, rental properties out there. So if you're now starting to get into the space, it's really a good time to do that because there's so much properties that are actually needed. In addition, two thirds of landlords said that they are confident about the future of property, the property market over the next 12 months, with a third of all landlords planning to buy a property in the coming years. As house prices continue to grow, an increase of people are renting for longer. Half of the renters say they are expected to be renting for the rest of their lives. Affordability is one of the reasons behind these figures. However, a growing number of also choosing to stay renting more flexible lifestyle and has led to some looking for, uh, for some properties uh, far further afield. In total, 10% said they prefer um, the reduced responsibility of renting, while a further 7% uh, said they're renting alone has allowed them to live a better uh, better life in a different location than they if they had bought. Because there is pros and cons about renting your property. There's pros and cons about buying your own property. Once you're buying your own property, make sure it's in the area that you like, um, because generally you might be stuck with it. But if you're renting, you're only in the short term and you've got to, the choice to move wherever you like to move to. So <clears throat> make sure that you... Always when you're looking at property buying, that you buy in a location that you like or even rent in that area for a while to see if you like it, then go on to buy it. It's always try before you buy scenario. If they said when asked why there were confidence about the future of the property market, landlords pointed to the house pr um, price growth, 41%. 
an increase in demand from tenants 41 percent the general strength of the economy 33 percent and the increase in rental yields currently available at 26 percent so what do you think about that do you think you should try before you buy or do you think you should just buy when you've got the opportunity to do so in avenues market boom to go on a supply shortage set to last into 2022. The very strong housing market is seen throughout the year is set to extend into 2022 as a stock shortage is forecast to continue. Zupla says that notwithstanding the reduced level of activity since the stamp duty holiday deadline of June 30th was passed, there remains many signs that the market is very strong. Stock of homes of sales are down 26.4% compared to 2020 average with low supply set to sh shape the market well into 2022. Property sell selling more quickly with average time nearly half that in 2019, down to 26 days, down from 49 days in 2019. An increased number of sales over the last 12 months with one in 20 homes changing hands over the past year compared to 25 in 2019. Stock shortage is the worst of homes prices up of 350,000, while supply of family homes has become more stretched. Average price rises 7.6% in the last 12 months. The portal in the latest and highly detailed analysis of the housing market says new listings are now running around 5% uh, below average, while increased activity amongst first-time buyers, investors absorbing the stock while failing to replenish it. Zupla suggests that first-time buyers have been increasingly active in 2021, supported by lenders who have reintroduced products that facilitate higher loans to value mortgage. Meanwhile, investors' demand is also up more than 21% compared to 2020, average boost by stamp duty relief. Finally, the supply of new homes, which shows in 2021 due to temporary hiatus in the construction um, industry during the lockdown, is down 11% in England. And while supply has started to pick up, Again, the dip has had an impact on the volume of properties that are out there. What do you think about the, this um, news? Do you think that is correct? Have you seen changes in your investments? Have you gone out to look for investments as well? In avenues, older buyers being excluded from the housing market warns agent. An agent says the housing market now has hidden characteristics and absence of homes that are friendly for older people. Lovett's estate agent, a regional company operated in Coventry and Warwickshire, says the issue is nationwide. In a statement, it says, with many inner city properties being untenable for elderly or disabled people, matters have been only been worsened by the housing policy focused predominantly on helping first time buyers. Last year, NHBC registered a total of 123,151 new homes in 2020, compared to 160,319 in 2019. Of those registered in 2020, just 1,942 were bungalows, the most popular form of home for many older buyers, especially those with mobility issues. According to Lovitz, this means those living with disabilities and the older population are left struggling to find suitable accommodation due to the lack of appropriate homes available. Meanwhile, separate an analysis was also conducted in England, and it says England, um, two thirds of all homes are set to be built in England over the next 10 years will not be readily accessible for the elderly or living with disabilities. From its analysis of 324 
local ho housing plans, which sets policies for types of homes and sets to build over the next decade, it found that there will just be one new accessible home erected in the next 10 years for every 77 people in the population, down from over 67 um, two years ago. This may seem solemn news, but 26.1 million dis disabled people or elderly living in the UK who already struggle to find a home in towns and city provided access, says Lovett. What do you think about that? Do you think it's unfair uh, elderly and people with disabilities are unable to find homes? Well, I absolutely do. I have also invisible disabilities as well and struggle um, to go around my home. So can you imagine if I get to the ripe old age, if I wasn't an investor, I could invest in my own home to accommodate myself or build my home around my disabilities. But for those who can't and need housing, uh, you know, it's an opportunity for investors to really look into this, this sector and be able to accommodate the, our elderly as we are also becoming el elderly ourselves. We're getting up in the years as well. And we need to start looking at accommodation to suit our needs. Many people that are buying properties now also look into later on uh, the mobility around their home. Do they need stairs? Should it be just on one level? All these things we need to consider as landlords or coming into the landlord space can you specialize in looking after our, our elderly or our, our, our people with disabilities as well please share in the feed if you have any comments around this subject it's uh, it's one that i'm very passionate about and i think you know more housing should be built around our mature um people in in who's who needs housing in our last bit of news today um, HMRC brings agents back down to earth. Big drop in transactions. House sales slumped nearly two thirds last month as the main deadline for the stamp duty holiday. HMRC Revenue and Customs says 82,110 homes residential property sales took place in July, which was down an eye watering 62% on June's record when there was 213,120 sales the highest month UK since the introduction of statistics in 20, um, 2005. HMRC said an expected but noticeable decrease has observed within the provisional July 2021 UK residential transaction statistics. The main reason was that buyers in England and Northern Ireland attempted to beat that June deadline and was unfortunate that they didn't. And it is now tapered off and will end completely on the September the 30th. However, despite the huge fall, um, the July 2021 sales has still has a marginal of 1.8% up more than last year. You know, all of this rushing to buy before the stamp duty. I mean, did you, was you able to buy your investments? Was you able to buy your home? I really would love to, to hear from you. And, you know, what 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 was your your feel about all this stamp duty and now that it's coming to the end at, at the end of this month? So if you haven't really already taken advantage of it, are you going to take advantage of it? It is going to taper off and it's going to go back to normal levels again. In other news, our last bit of news today, property with a partner. Experts tips on protecting your finances. James Andrew, a senior personal finance editor at money.co.uk, offers up top tips on how, to, how those planning to purchase a home with their significant other can protect their finances. With the average house in England setting buyers back 268,000, for many, the feasibility way to step onto the property ladder is to do this with a significant other. Many might be many might see purchasing a home with their partner as a natural next step in their relationship, but it's important for couples to really understand the financial implications of taking out a mortgage together and how previous financial decisions may affect this. So I've got some tips that they've shared here. It says one: understand your mortgage options. Joint mortgages are usually solutions for partners 
and also available to married couples, unmarried couple, civil uh, partners, or even just friends and relatives. Legally, everyone named on the mortgage is responsible for making payments, even if ha you have a joint mortgage where one person is paying. According to uh, Honest, combining unmarried couples are the fastest growing type of um, family in the UK, with the larger number of couples deciding to purchase a home prior to getting married. Most unmarried couples will opt to be joint tenants where both parties have equal ownership of that property. This means that if one person were to die, the other tenant would automatically inherit the property. If you or your partner earn different amounts and would like to contribute different amounts to the mortgage or would like the difference in contributions to be financially protected, your relationship break, should your relationship break down even, then you opt to become a tenant in common. This will allow you to split the shares in the home in which way you decide. Sell your share in the property separately or leave the share of the property to someone else in your will. This is really about protecting yourself here, um, listeners. Always look to protect yourself when you're getting a joint mortgage with anyone, even if it is family, even if it is your, your partner, your husband. Just always try to look to protect each and other. Things do happen, things do go wrong, things do go absolutely right, but always look to protect yourself. It says your partner could be affecting your credit rating and never one to look out for. Before committing to a joint mortgage with your partner, it's important to understand their financial situation and if their financial history um, could be negatively affected your chance of getting a mortgage. Lenders will definitely run a credit check on both of you. So make sure that both of your credit reports are exceptional, as well as asking to see your bank statements. If you are um, not good with saving money and always good at spending it, this will be a negative against you as well. So always make sure that you check your credit reports before even considering getting a joint mortgage. Look at your finances, get your finances um, straight as well. More than that, Taking out a product with another person means that your credit report will become linked. That means their ratings will affect you, you going forward, even when you apply for something else. Before taking out a mortgage, it makes sense to check both reports, as I said, and make sure that there's no mistakes on them. For example, registering a, to vote at your current address. So please, please check this because this is important. Another third thing is to discuss um, salary dis um, disparities and financial responsibilities. If you're planning on purchasing a home together, it can make sense to pull money into a single bank account for bills. You might even find one that offers cashback for using it in that way. However, those earning significantly less than the other half, this could pose some uncomfortable issues when it comes to splitting everything 50-50. A compromise of paying a percentage of bills based on an individual income could be fairer way to um, dividing outgoings. In addition to safeguarding yourself in your relationship, where to break down keeping your own separate bank accounts open will allow you to continue to still manage your own personal finances and outgoings such as mobile phones and non-essential spending. Another one, consider long-term lifetime lifestyle choices. Equally, it's also important as making the decision to buy a home with your partner is the matter of where you're going to live. Um, chances are you will be there for a number of years and you will want to make sure that the investment makes sense, both particularly, um, practically and financially. It is wise to sit down with each and other to discuss this and discuss topics um, that could have an impact on the kind of property you need to buy to fit your future plans. Are you planning to have children in the near future? And if so, is there local schools? Could a new job or career path mean you need to suddenly move and sell up? Are house prices in the area increasing or decreasing? How much money would it cost 
to make any renovations to the property. Understanding one another's priorities and goals prior to making any substantial financial commitments could save you hassle and money in the long run. Uh, tip four, planning for the end. The harsh reality is not every relationship lasts, sadly. And things are do get complicated. And when a massive financial commitment that's jointly held in the mix, this could uh, stir problems. That means it will make sense to sit down with a lawyer and draw up a simple document ahead of the purchase, outlining what will happen if one of you decide to sell up. These don't need to be in, um, in full details, but, but it needs to be simple enough and be correct that both of you agree to it. And of course, only one way the relationship can end, which means also it is important a life critical insurance policy be put in place as well to cover the mortgage if one of you are no longer able to work. Having a suitable policy in place means the other won't be forced to sell up at a time they will doubt, um, doubtless have that on their head. So cutting all these kind of financial things, making sure that you're able to cover in the event of any eventuality is always a good thing. That is the end of our In the News with Savvy Sophia this morning. I hope you really enjoyed it and got a, a lot from it. I'd like to also... Um, if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask, if you think that, you know, any comments or any topics you'd like me to cover about in the news or you'd like me to do a news special on something that you really want to get a better understanding with, please feel free. You can also contact us, as you can see the banner going across, at contact us at savvywomen.co.uk. And news was always going to be bringing to you 8 a.m. on Monday mornings. I look forward to, to bringing more news to you. Please feel free uh, to share your comments. If it's had, if you're on a replay, don't forget to do hashtag replay. I look forward to sharing more news with you next week. Have a lovely week. Have a lovely day. And I will see you next week. Yeah.